The season of Great Lent is, as we've already said, full of hymns, services, and prayers that you will not hear at any other time of the year. Today we're going to take a short look at one of the most well-known, the Lenten prayer of St. Ephraim the Syrian. St. Ephraim the Syrian is one of early Christian history's greatest hymnographers and poets. He lived in the 4th century and was ordained a deacon by one of the bishops who was actually at the Council of Nicaea. Ephraim's poems and hymns are incredibly complex and full of beautiful and deep symbolism. If you approach them for the first time and you struggle to understand them, that is okay. It may take a few read-throughs, it definitely did for me. Another poetic saint, a century after Saint Ephraim, said this about him. He said that Ephraim was a sheepdog, guarding the sheep of God's household, building for them a sheepfold out of his poems and hymns, so that within their safety he might guard the sheep from storms. Ephraim's poetry fought for truth against heresy, and fought for the preservation of beauty amidst the chaos of this world. For most Orthodox Christians, he comes to mind most easily not for poetry and hymnography, but for a prayer. This prayer is one that Orthodox Christians pray every single Lent. It is a prayer that fully encapsulates what we're trying to do in Lent, how we're trying to grow in Lent. And so we add it to our weekday prayers all through the Lenten season. It is a prayer that helps us grow ever deeper in our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not just that the prayer is beautifully written, this prayer is also a physical one. At the end of each of the three short sections, there is a prostration to be made. Now, a prostration is a humble, full-body movement towards God. It is mentioned several times in the Bible, and it is done by Orthodox Christians to this day. A section of the prayer is read, a prostration is made, the person stands up, does the next section. If you are physically unable to do a prostration, that is okay. Please don't hurt yourself. A low bow is perfectly fine as well. So, let's go through the prayer. There are several different translations of this prayer and several different word orders, but this is one of them. O Lord and Master of my life, take from me the spirit of sloth, despondency, lust of power, and idle talk. This is followed by a prostration. But grant rather a spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to your servant. Another prostration. Yes, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own faults and not to judge my brother. For blessed are you to the ages of ages. Amen. This is followed by a third prostration. Now many people will then begin the prayer from the top, reading it all the way through with one final prostration at the end. So, O Lord and Master of my life, take from me the spirit of sloth, despondency, lust of power, and idle talk, but grant rather a spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to your servant. Yes, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own faults, and not to judge my brother, for blessed are you to the ages of ages. Amen. So that is the prayer of Saint Ephraim. If you are interested in adding it into your prayer life and you haven't yet, I would recommend visiting an Orthodox church and talking about this through with the priest there. It is a magnificent prayer. It is a prayer that encapsulates what we're trying to do on this quest of Great Lent. It is a prayer that draws us closer to Christ alongside the millions of fellow Christians praying it around the world every single Lent. Thank you very much for watching. This is the first, but definitely not the last time, where we will do an episode that involves reading straight from the words of ancient Christian saints. If you're interested in what tea I am drinking, today it is a simple black tea with French vanilla. It's not too bad, although it would have been nicer with milk, I think.